found a way. Uh, certainly an interesting one, but we've known to keep it interesting this year. A uh, different type of 2020 Memphis football, uh, but we'll take it. So proud of the effort of these guys. Talked about starting fast and finishing strong. <laughs> interesting way to finish it, but I couldn't be more proud. Uh, seven and three, be able to defend that streak at the Liberty Bowl is huge. Grateful for these seniors and everything they meant to this program. Uh, just so proud of their efforts. And, you know, look, we don't have everybody we started the season with in that locker room, but I couldn't ask to go to battle every single day with a better group of young men and just so proud of them. Catch our breath, maybe tonight, be safe and smart, and then turn around and uh, hopefully find out our bowl information tomorrow. Raven, first question for Coach. Coach, it's funny because uh, watching this game, I thought of when you called your team the Cardiac Cats. And I'm sure you felt like that this week as well. But uh, kind of going into my question, um, the first quarter started off a bit lackluster, but you guys picked it up in the second quarter after that interception. Uh, it went, you guys ended up getting the interception on defense. You guys scored a touchdown, and then the defense was able to get that 85-yard fumble recovery. So during that sequence in the second quarter, what were you telling your team? What really motivated you guys to get that done? You know, look, I mean, what a great job. I, you're right, exactly right, Raven, right? The sequence of that game, that that second quarter, and we've seen that throughout the season for us. Um, that's kind of what was the turning point of mo momentum. And we always talk about we don't want momentum to affect us, but I certainly think that's where it hit. Um, you know, I think our guys just keep digging and believing. Uh, our defense obviously had a great deal of belief in what we were able to do. Uh, credit to a great Houston offense, obviously what they were able to do in the second half, uh, especially in the fourth quarter. but. Um, you know, I think our defense just stood up and, and found a way, right? We talk about defending every blade of grass in that red zone, being able to get that fumble recovery uh, for that long touchdown run. If you think about that, that was Jalen Allen's first start. So, so proud of him. But uh, look, I think our guys just believe in each other. And I told him this morning at the team hotel that it's going to take all three phases. And sure as heck it did, right? I mean, obviously the defense played lights out. Um, the offense did it what they were supposed to in spurts, but not certainly not consistent enough. I've used that term a lot. And obviously the special teams had some flunders, uh, but found a way at the end to get it done. Steven? Hey, Ryan, following up on what you just said about Jalen, um, just what can you just say about, like you said, he's making his first start. Honestly, you could argue that was maybe the play of the game. Just what can you say about what he showed you guys making his first start today? Oh, it was awesome. You know, what it shows is, see, even this year, we've had to play so many different people. Um, you know, and really, he was, if you looked at the depth chart when we started the year, he was probably third string on there. And for him to be able to step up like he did and get a, get the start, he played really well. I mean, just talk about a clean game for him and go out there and get that big play. Just so proud, right? And I asked him in the locker room in front of the team, I said, where are you from? He saw him from Houston. But uh, I said, where do you call home now? He said, Memphis. It's big for him, a guy that's from that city um, who's here now. Uh, you know, it's just, it, it's an honor to have him. And he's got a very, very bright future. And he played his, his tail off. Terry? How you doing, Coach? Congratulations on the win. Thanks, Terry. Hey, man, your guys could have mentally checked out a long time ago after they got eliminated from the, the championship race, you know, after the loss to Tulane last year. They came out with fire and energy. What this is about the character of this team to keep fighting and protect their home for a turf because they could easily just said, we just gonna play this game out. Uh, absolutely, you're exactly right. And Terry, we talked about it, you know, I think even on Monday, it's how do you continue to motivate 18 to 22 year olds uh, to keep fighting? And, and you know, even though you may say, well, what, a lot of teams, right? You've seen teams say they don't wanna play bowl games. I've talked to other head coaches in the country saying, man, they're, they're pulling teeth to get their guys to play hard, uh, to even practice, to show up. Um, you know, teams are having guys that opt out um, you know, even even today and yesterday, and it's part of it. And we've just got to continue to pull along. But it, it speaks highly to the character of the young men. Um, we're seven and three right now. You know, we have a chance to be eight and three, and that's really what's important. We found a way to be one and zero today, and I'm just so proud of them because it's it's not pretty. Um, and I'll be the first to say, look, uh, I don't know if we're as talented as the teams we've had in the past, and I don't mind saying that because I was part of those teams in the past. Um, but these guys fight and they find a way. Certainly, you know, uh, like Raven said, we are the cardiac cats. I mean, it's, but finding a way to win these games is what's so important. 
and uh, and just couldn't be more proud. Their character. We've talked about resiliency. Um, you know, we let them back in the game uh, in the you know in the second half, but you find a way to <laughs> get it done, and it makes it all worthwhile. You know, it's seven and three. Uh, if the season were stopped right now, we'd be top five win percentages in the last fifty years of Memphis football history. And so, obviously, we want to go find a way to win a bowl game uh, because that's something we haven't been able to do here in a while. And uh, but our, our guys are can continue to have pride uh, and, and have a lot to fight for uh, whenever we get to play that bowl game. Jacob, hey, coach, uh, congrats on the win. Thank you. And um, Riley Patterson, you know, he he really helped you guys out. He made sure that you guys didn't have to go into overtime. Uh, what can you say about him and what he's done for you in this game and pretty much during your time? Yeah, you know, so first off, I my uh, our sports information department probably won't be happy with me. But I'll let you guys know he was selected to the Senior Bowl. So really proud. I was able to tell him. I don't know where the if news broke yet because I think there was some stuff um, but I was able to tell the team Friday afternoon when I got the FedEx package, and I think we we're going to release it this week at some point, obviously. But uh, just so proud of him. Riley is a, a great young man. He's mature. He gets it. Um, he's a leader. Uh, he's one of those that, you know, you, a lot of people don't ever talk about their kicker, but he's been so much to this program, right? Being a four year starter, uh, we have been known as Kicker U. And, uh, <laughs> Glad that he was able to do what he did today. Someone told me it was his first ever career walk-off uh, game-winning field goal, which is awesome. I love it. Um, you know, however, former fashion, but he, he's a fantastic young man uh, who really glad that it was him lining up to kick that field goal. Evan? Brian, this first season obviously has been a lot of different things. Um, Tomorrow's actually, I believe, the one year anniversary of when you were hired. So what can you talk about just what this team has meant for you and just what you've learned over this season? Just, you know, not just learning on the job, but just really kind of making it through this season as a whole. Evan, you sure it's only been a year. It feels about 30 years. Um, got a lot more gray hair and my heart stress test, I'm sure, is out the roof. But yeah, it's, uh, look, you guys know how much this job means to me and what it means to me to be a Memphis Tiger and be part of this uh, community. And uh, see, just talk about it. You know how it gets me, guys. Um, that's how proud I am of these guys because um, it hadn't been pretty. You know, the Cotton Bowl, the way to start the career uh, here, obviously that was fun. Um, disappointed we lost that game. But then be able to you know, face the adversity that we faced really these last you know, seven months, eight months uh, has been something else. And it's been a battle. You know, you hear about the anguish, the, the, the heartbreak, um, not only what everybody in this world's going through, but you, know, you hear about it in college football programs, how hard it's been, how gut-riching it's been. You know, from Thursday nights getting calls at 10 o'clock at night, hearing that players may be out because of COVID. And then all of a sudden you got to change your roster, you're dealing with opt-outs, uh, dealing with injuries. But to be able to sit there in the locker room and celebrate with those guys, what a great win for their team, for our program, for the university. And uh, I'm just honored they let me be a part of this and be able to lead them in some form or fashion. And it's, it's meant the world. It's been a heck of a uh, first year. Um, but I've learned a ton. I've got to continue to improve as a head coach, as a person. And um, But I know the future is very bright here at Memphis. And, and look, the work's not done yet for the 2020 football season, but uh, just so honored to be able to be the football coach here. Clayton. Hey, Coach, uh, in, in a similar vein with that, I know there hasn't been a lot of time to be reflective this year, um, but, you know, to be here at game 10 of the regular season to just finish it, um, you know, with, with everything that's gone on to get to this point. I mean, can you just speak to that being an accomplishment in and of itself that you've gotten 10 games in? Yeah, absolutely. You know, Clayton, I've made no bones about it. That the number one concern this whole year is the health and safety of our student athletes. And to be able to accomplish 10 games, be able to play a complete home schedule at the Liberty Bowl, it's huge, right? Credit to Laird Beach, uh, President Rudd, all those people that helped keep this thing going, Daryl Turner, athletic training staff, um, for making this thing go. Um, but it is it is an accomplishment. I mean, I'm not going to hide it. To be seven and three, to be able to play 10 games, uh, in a season where so many teams, right, you know, saw Arizona State finished up their season 
uh, one and two. They played three games this year. So we feel so fortunate to be able to line up there and do it. Uh, I believe our guys are constantly trying to do it the right way in order to play football. And, uh, you know, that, that takes a lot because it's enough to play college football. It's enough for an 18 to 22 year old to line up every day to be a student athlete, uh, to be a student, and then to be put what the demands of college football relies on. Now you're talking about adding all the stuff that's occurred in this 2020 season. Um, a lot of guys could have waved that white flag and these guys show up to work every single day. Uh, like I said, our numbers aren't as big as they were uh, when training camp started, but you know, or even even when 2020 started. But uh, these guys come to work every day. They've got the right mentality, and it is an accomplishment. And I'm not going to hide anything about it. And look, I, like I said, found a way to go one another this week. And now we got we got big eyes and grand scheme set on a, a winning a bowl game. We'll do two more, Terry. Hey, Coach, I saw that uh, Sean went out early and you had to go deep into your tight end pool. Uh, any update on his injuries and anyone else who may have went out? Yeah, so I'll start with anybody else. I don't think there's any other significant injuries, Terry. Um, and then we're going to – we'll check on Sean. I should have an answer. Uh, so maybe some more information for you guys on Monday or Tuesday this week. But, um, you know, obviously Sean's been a lot to this program. You know, for him, um, possibly his last game in the Liberty Bowl you know, being from Houston. So we'll see, um, but, you know, I'll keep my fingers crossed that he's healthy. And that that's what I have on him. So I don't have nothing else on it. Brian? Uh, just to piggyback off that, uh, Calvin Austin it looked like he tweaked his leg. Do you know if he's okay at all? I think so. I do, Brian. I, I saw him walking around. Um, yeah, he tried to pick, even though I'm overweight uh, during this 2020 football season because of uh, quarantine and all that stress eating, I'm sure. But uh, he did try to pick me up, so I think his leg's okay. Thank you, Coach. Hey, thank you, guys. I appreciate you guys. Uh, I look forward to seeing you guys at Liberty Bowl in 2021. Appreciate all the support, and uh, the, I truly do. And I don't get to thank you guys enough. The media coverage you guys give our team, uh, good, bad, or indifferent, but uh, our players certainly deserve all the credit and uh, appreciate you guys showing them in the right light. Thank you all.